All right, so this is Professor Gilmet, and today I'd like to talk to you about sampling distribution for a proportion. All right, and so uh, we've been talking about the central limit theorem, and we did some skewed data in my last video. And so in this report, we are looking specifically at the sampling distribution of a proportion because it's a little bit different, okay? And you get to see the central limit theorem in effect again. So what I did was I chose some data where sex is either male or female um, by X and Y chromosomes, all right? And so it is spread e about evenly through the population, although we observe slightly more um, women in general for, for biological reasons that have to do with the, the chromosomes and some other things, all right? And so what I did was I generated a random sample of 10,000 individuals pretending like I was asking them the question, are you male? All right, so let's look at the distribution. And so here's my lovely histogram. The mean you'll see is 0 0.501. All right, so I have a basically exactly half males and half females uh, by chromosome. And the standard deviation is also 0 0.50. Um, and that's because for this population, either you answered, yes, I am a male, and so you're over here, or I answered no, which means you are a female, and you are over here. And you can see the frequency is about 5,000. Well, this is about the most bimodal distribution that you can get, right? Because it literally has two modes because there are only two answers, which is what you see with a population uh, proportion, okay? So as you can see, with a proportion, you either have a trait or you don't. For instance, are you male? This leads to two modes in the population. Yes is equal to one, and no is equal to zero. All right. However, when we take samples, oh, sorry, and the average, the yeses and the nos, we see a familiar pattern. And yes, that is the plural of yeses and um, nos. All right. And so what does it look like when we do this? Let me get the sampling distribution in. So this is my uh, normal and the mean is still 0 0.50. Now it's 2 so it's it's a little bit different um, but I took like uh, 500 samples I think and but we see the standard deviation now is 0 0.155 alright and we're noticing that because I could have a small number of samples where there were no men and maybe a very small number of samples where there was one man, um, 10 men with one yes, one tenth would be 0.1, right? And so this is a sample of two men. Here's a sample of three men. Five men is the mode, right? Because as we can see, that is the mean and the mode. And we see this very normal distribution. So because the sample size is 10, I don't have a bimodal distribution anymore. I have a very nice looking normal um, distribution for my uh, data. And so I'm going to scroll up again. So with a sample size of 10, we see the normal distribution starting to form the, oops, <laughs> central limit theorem manifests in the sampling distribution. Okay. Now we see that the standard deviation has gone from 0.5 to 0.15. Why is that? Well, as we saw before, the variation decreases as the sample size increases. That's part of that central limit theorem manifesting in the sampling. Okay, uh, the formula is a bit different though. Okay, and it's because it's with proportions, and it has to do with the binomial theorem. And so your book may explain it better, but I just want to go straight to the formula. The standard deviation for a sample proportion, p hat is equal to the square root of p, the population proportion, times 1 minus p. Some books will label that q, um, but I like to keep my notation very uh, clean, and so I did it this way, divided by n. Okay, And so you've got the square root of p, 1 minus p, divided by n. All right. So, which in this case is the standard deviation of the population proportion is equal to the square root of 0.5, half males, times 1 minus 0.5, which is the females, right? That would be your nose, divided by 10, which was my sample size. Uh, cleaning that up a bit, I got the square root of 25 divided by 10, and when you take the square root of 0.025, you get the 0.158. 
So this is the theoretical uh, standard deviation that you should get if you took an infinite number of samples. You can see as I scroll back up that I got very close to that 0.156 even with only 500 samples. Okay, so it's very, very close. Um, which is which is very close to the observed value in the above sampling distribution. If I increase the sample size to 50, we see the following. And so now the central limit theorem is really going to be kicking in. And so now my sample size is 50. My mean, oops, my mean is exactly, almost exactly what it was for the entire population. But now my standard deviation is 0 0.072. Uh, my mode is a little bit off, but you can see it's right there on that peak. It's falling away. It's looking very normal. Um, and again, if I had made uh, more samples, if I had maybe done a thousand or something like that, um, we would have seen it look even better. But you can see there's less uh, zero percent, one percent, two percent. There's a lot less uh, seven, eight, nine percent. And so this is really shrunk in and looks way more normal and is showing much less variability. And so if we go ahead and look where the expected standard deviation would be equal to that same 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 divided by 50 now. So I'm going to have a quarter divided by 50, which is the square root of 0 0.05, is going to give us that 0 0.071, which is almost exactly what we have here. Okay? And so now we're ready for a sample size of 100. And again, the mean is exactly the same. The standard deviation is only slightly smaller. I doubled the size of the sample, but I, I've barely reduced my standard deviation, and it's because of that square root. But you can see, again, now there's even less in the 30% range. There's even less in the uh, 70, 80 percent range. That mode right there at 0.5, right in the in my distribution. And so this is uh, even more normal looking as I have taken an even larger sample size. And so where the expected standard deviation of the proportion, I'm sorry, my I uh, I must not have copied that, is the square root of 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 divided by 100. And so when I clean that up, that's the 0.25 we've been expecting divided by 100. And so now we have the square root of 0 0.0025, which gives us the standard deviation of 0 0.05, which is what we saw. And so the central limit theorem is working. And with this even bimodal data, right, as I scroll up to the population proportion, so even with this bimodal data, um, as I took enough samples of a large enough sample size, I got a very normal looking curve. And so the central limit theorem is working and the de standard deviations are changing according to this formula. And so that makes us very, very happy. Um, I want you to just know, I think this is kind of important, um, that if you do P times 1 minus P, that should be a P, I mistyped it, you should get P minus P squared, all right? So you've got the P squared there. And so we actually have the square root of the squared term, just like with the means. Remember with the means, it was the square root of S squared or sigma squared. Here with proportions, we have the square root of P squared if you multiply out the uh, two terms, okay? And I'm sorry about this one. I know that's a mistake. I should probably fix that in the report. All right, and this makes us happy. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope it helps you understand the central limit theorem as it works with proportions.